Hi everyone, my name is Pele Renata and welcome to my YouTube channel. For today's project, I will be working on two very interesting topics. First topic with which I will start my project is exploring texture, while the second one is exploring the shadows of blue color, specifically paper artsy fresco finish chalk acrylic serves up. The inspiration for the whole project came from the Paper Artsy stamp set uh, from the Hot Peaks collection and to be able to decide on the size of my substrate I decided first to prepare my focal image. As you can see on the video I have heat embossed the same image twice once with the gold embossing powder on the vellum paper and once again with the black embossing powder on white paper. But as you can see I have fussy cut them in a different way because the idea was to assemble them in one single image. But now that my focal point was done I decided on the size of the canvas I'm going to use and I have prepared a paper napkin and some matte medium. This technique would work also with the tissue paper, but for those of you who choose to work with the paper napkin same as me, I would like to warn you to be aware that paper napkins usually have two or three layers. To make the whole process more smooth, I would advise you to separate those layers, which can sometimes be a bit hard because they are really nicely stick together, but it's manageable. Anyway, one thing that you can perhaps notice is that I was really trying to make as much as possible wrinkles while adhering my napkin. Don't be worried if this is not turning out as you imagined, because this is actually only the first layer of the texture. Anyway, I was uh, repeating the process all over my canvas, but still I left uh, one area which I plan to leave without texture and I think that serves uh, as a nice contrast and actually makes your texture pop up even more. Ideally for this process you would have used a white paper napkin but I didn't have such at home so I used one for my children with the cartoon images. As I said, paper napkins usually have three or two layers and the bulk of the print is on the first layer, which is obviously most visible to us. But sometimes the print is retained on the second and third layer and that's why you can see those uh, reddish and darkish spots on my canvas. But luckily there is a really easy fix for that and that is applying a white gesso. And as you can see, my canvas was now uniformly white and dry, so it was time to start working on the second level of texture. For that purpose, I have used Paper Artsy Grunge Paste and I am applying it with my palette knife. At this point, I am applying it occasionally over certain areas where the napkin texture is, but also on some empty areas. This way I was covering some more harsh lines from the paper napkin texture, but also giving uh, variations in the types of texture on the canvas. As you can perhaps notice, I am really trying to smooth out the grunge paste and make some more even textures. At this point I decided to leave my canvas air dry and continue to work on it the next day. And here hopefully you can notice the lovely textures that I have achieved and you can notice the difference in the texture made by the paper napkin and the grunge paste. Now the second topic which I'm going to explore is the shades of blue color or more specifically shades of the paper artsy fresco finish chalk acrylic surface up. If you want to learn more about the difference in terms shades tones and tints, stop by to my blog post on the Paper Artsy blog and the link for it you can find in the description box down below 
together with the full list of supplies that I have used for this project. Anyway, back to my canvas now. <laughs> As you might have noticed, I have used a wide flat brush for the dry brushing technique and I have applied a layer of a pure surfs up color. But now I am starting to add bit by bit of the pure black color or in this case paper artsy fresco finish chalk acrylic little black dress. While applying the paint I am moving the brush in all directions because I didn't want to have those visible brush strokes. This way with the dry brushing technique this process lasts quite a while but in my case I really felt it relaxing. Now for each uh, next layer I was adding more and more uh, black color and with each layer I was uh, staying more towards the edges of the canvas because this will offer the opportunity that on one canvas all the shades of the serves up can be noticed. This technique really requires some patience as for me the whole process of applying a paint lasted about an hour. Anyway, I won't show you how I applied all the layers because then the video would last way too long. Instead, I will a little bit fast forward to the part when I used a smaller brush and one of the darkest uh, shades of uh, Surf's Up that I managed to achieve to accentuate some of the textures that I have made. I think this step was actually more important than I realized at that moment because it really helped to emphasize those lovely textures that I managed to achieve. At some point uh, while I was doing this uh, part I felt that my canvas got a bit too dark so I went back to brushing some brighter shades randomly over some more textured areas. The texture that I have made at start is full of little bumps and ridges and I think it gives actually a really lovely opportunity to showcase uh, different shades of color or if you decide to work with different colors I think that would work beautifully as well. For this kind of project to really pop up it really needs some highlights. One of the way to achieve that is using a sanding block. I kept my sanding block as horizontally as possible and this way I removed the paint only from the most textured areas. This didn't provide perfect white highlights, just rather some more brighter areas. But to be honest I really liked how this looked and wanted <laughs> to emphasize it even more so I decided to use a little bit of the white paint as well. The white pa acrylic paint that I have used is a Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Chalk Acrylic Snowflake. To be sure that my acrylic paint is uh, going only on most textured areas, I have used a palette knife and same with the sanding block, I kept it horizontally. Now one thing that I always tend to say is that I like to have some connection between my focal image and uh, background. In this case, my focal image has golden details, so I wanted to put some of the gold color on my background as well. For that I have used the Winsor & Newton uh, ink in gold color and stamps from the Paper Artsy Hot Picks collection. And once again I say for specific uh, product list you can check my description box down below or my blog post over at the Paper Artsy blog. As my background uh, was very textured I didn't get the perfect prints from stamping but honestly I was really fine with that. Now one last step before adhering my focal image was to add the sentiment. For that I chose a stencil from Paper Artsy designed by Sarah Newman. And that's it for this project. But if you want to see how I explored more texture making techniques before committing to this one, check out my next video. Bye!